Your music exclusive. I, I, I grew up like a savage. Like hip hop was the whole world. Like it was like a whole. It's like being a samurai yeah. or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it was like yeah. you were immersed in a whole world. Like, Man. oh, have you heard this? And you used to test people. Like, well, have you heard this and that and that? Like, there's hella subgenres. But when hip hop hit us, it was finally something that was ours. You right. Know, you can't sing. You know, or you not. You know, you don't got dance moves or right. something. This is something that we could really do, and 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 we could afford to do it. You know what I mean? But also, like, people don't really get how important hip hop is or was to that sort of the people that were raised on it from that from that first era. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about 88 and the golden age, the guys are on top. G Rap, Kane, KRS, LL, Rakim, mm -hmm. Chuck D, mm -hmm. Short, Q, you know what I'm saying? No, Q maybe a little bit later, mm -hmm. but still those are the dudes that's on top. Right. They the best. The so best. we're trying to be the best. So it, it's no no disrespect to Hammer who who showed everybody how to get money. No everybody. No Hammer, yeah. no Drake. No mm -hmm. Hammer, no Jay Z. Mm -hmm. No, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. No, and 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 as a kid though, I couldn't stand it. Like right. I, I was like, you got us looking like clowns. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying though? 94 was cool. It was cool. 88 though. Look at look at what came out in 88. It's all like it's all the top 20 records of all time. You know what I'm saying? Take the nation of millions. Uh, my, you know, what is that called? By any means necessary. Mm -hmm. Along live the cane. You know what I'm saying, though? So our style developed differently because we were trying to be the best. So you look at it like when you see kids, kids in high school, it'd be one dude, the center, who could dunk in, in, high, in a high school basketball game. Now these kids play it's all like bronze, right? And it's, it's partly diet, but it's partly they working on their ups and have a different mental. Like I can do, your, your brain is open to where you can do that. Right, and that's right. the same as when Rock Him and them came out. We was like, oh, you could rhyme hella syllables back to back. You don't even have to rap about, you don't have to be elementary with what you're saying. You could say something that could be about some, you know, like extended that was, metaphors That was always that. my same problem with, with, with uh, I just didn't like the basic. I was like, it was so many lyricists out. I just wasn't, like Short was one thing, but he was like the exception to the rule. You know what I'm saying? I just wasn't really with basic rhyming people, so. Yeah. But he had strong content. Though. He had yeah, strong content. content. Yeah, content. Right. And There's he, still not a song like The Ghetto out there. Right, bro. Right, right, true. And he lived mm -hmm. in his shit, too. And mm -hmm. he was, when a short was grown, like, these are the men that, you know what I'm saying? If your dad ain't around and all that, even Hammer, they, they were grown. They, they moved grown. like grown-ass men. Right, right. So these are the men we look like. Even And I'm saying, when I'm saying grown, I mean 22, 23. But when you're 13, yeah, you think you somebody that's that 24 like, is yeah. an old man. Oh, right. You're 24? Whoa, <laughs> you good? So, so they, they had a depth to their lyrics that was, was uh, evident. I mean, it was grown. It was mm -hmm. a grown aesthetic. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a little kid aesthetic. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. No. So the things that he was saying in the ghetto or, 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 mm -hmm. or you know, what, all, all that stuff. It, 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 was, it was deep even though it wasn't complex. Right. So, so it was, it was, it was, co or complex though it wasn't complicated. Right. You know what I'm saying? But then you had also the guys with the complicated flows, and those are the people who, I think, still to this day, they, they, that's who we trying to, trying to get like. You know what I'm saying? I just dropped a song with G Rap last year. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, he's in the same form he was in in '88. In '88. But not, yeah. not same. I'm saying same form, even right. better rapper. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that, that's kind of what we're emulating. I want to address something, right? Because. And, and everybody's grown now, so when you look back at it in retrospect, especially when you have the kids responding to lyrics the way that they do, right? And when you talk about short, I think about, the, I mean, not short hammer, I think about the disrespect, right? We was like, okay, that don't represent us, but we admire people for getting, like, people were mad at him for getting a Taco Bell deal. Like, he was yeah, a sellout right. at KFC that point. KFC and all KFC, that, yeah. right? Yeah. So, when I think about it, like I listen to Gas Face, but when I listen to it as an older man, like damn, Sergey was going to hammer like that. Everybody was going to hammer. Like, They're on his mountain. You know what I'm saying? But we we, yeah. we had a myopic kind of tunnel vision view of what rap was, and yeah. it was ours. And you like you selling that to them? Yeah, that's crazy. But we wasn't mad at Curtis Blow for doing Sprite. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mad no. Mad at Curtis Blow. Well, we it. wasn't mad at Cuban them for doing Saint Ides because it was edgy and street. You know what I'm saying? And we and we and we. And we could have definitely been Forgot mad at Cube for that. damn near coming off 
Five percent teachers, one. and then and then they selling, selling the same eyes. Yeah. You know what I'm they saying? They forgot about like, that. So one. that was crazy. Mm-hmm. But I think it's also the way Hammer did it, though. Yeah. When mm-hmm. I talk about grown, mm-hmm. Hammer was a little older. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, no shirt. You know, yeah. Buck, yeah. pants, hard bottom shoes. Because his a dancer. influences are are fucking James Brown. It's not another yeah, yeah. rapper. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, his yeah, influences yeah. is Michael Jackson and James yeah. Brown. He's not yeah. competing with no rap dude. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That wasn't his competition. So I think I think we just didn't understand what he was doing. But also is the way he was doing it too. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta understand that the way, like right now hip hop is all one thing. We was looked at like Bama's when we first came out at the West Coast. You had we did. Oh, you got a Jerry Curl. Oh, now every, now it's cool to be a pimp. Right. I think Biggie kind of made that right. cool and then 50 and all that. Right. But before they used to be like, oh, you from Oakland? What, you, what is you a pimp? A pimp. Or something? Yeah. Yep. What, uh, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Oh, you a player? Like mm-hmm. they used to be joking. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying though? Oh, mm-hmm. And uh, they, they thought we all had Jerry Curls, drank 40s, thought we all was in gangs like the LA, LA rappers and everything. So I think that Hammer with the little juice and, and the guy with the funny hair and the dancing yeah. and all that, like as a 13 to 16 year old, I hated yeah, you're that. Like, you like, I don't want to be, yeah, I don't want to be that. I didn't mess with right. it either. Right. Hate it, hate but my it. favorite group was like Mob Deep and all of that and G-Rap. Yeah, so yeah. that side of the spectrum wasn't even a question for me. You from a big city too yeah. though, right? So, so Twister, yeah, yeah. we were super in the underground, like his, you know how hard Twister was when the tapes came out, yeah, bro. Yeah. And we supported him on the underground where we was copping tapes. And he was going ghetto platinum in the street to just selling tapes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And we was knocking them. And Drill yeah. and Rush came out three times on the tape before it even seen commercial shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. We was knocking them. Right. It was just different. I, I, you know, it's funny, though, because when you speak about that time mm-hmm. and, and just think about it, Chuck just said 94 was a good year, but when I think about even – you guys dropping 93 till infinity, right? Because that for me was like, first of all, I'm listening to y'all style and I'm listening to, I'm like, these dudes different. First of all, everybody didn't have dreads. So it's niggas in this group with locks. Yeah. And, and but I'm seeing Oakland imagery all over this fucking video. Like it's Mustangs on gold ones. Yeah. yeah. But you know, these don't look like sideshow niggas. Like in my mind, but we used to be at the side show. But y'all used show, to be right? at the side show, the like, right? Like we go there all the time, right? So in, in my in, in my mind, I'm thinking like, who who the fuck are these dudes, right? And then so they like, no, they from 82nd. Like, okay, so I start digging deeper, and then people that was older than me say, no, I go to Skyline with such and such, or I go to you know school with him, or he, you know, and then I start really doing my homework, and I was all into, I was all in at this point in hip hop, right? So. That was me ordering y'all video on the box all the time. <laughs> that, that was me. Hey, yeah. Without the box, I don't think we'd get a bubble like yeah. how, how, how we did. Yeah. yeah. And g- getting together as souls of mischief, right? So, wait, who jumped off the porch first? Was it Dale? Dale. Dale cause Cube is Dale's first cousin. So, Kip, Dale was writing for Cube and Yo-Yo. And then Dale, Cube put Dale on, and then Dale b- pulled us all out. So, while we right there... Did the Mad Circle get y'all name? We, we, hieroglyphics was the Mad Circle. So we were the hiero sign, but with a mad face. Look at this face. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, like, damn, I needed that. <laughs> 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 so we were the hiero sign, but with a mad face, right? Mm. Then Dub C and them took the Mad Circle. It's Dub C. Dub C. What, what, what are we going to do? Hey, fellas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Guys, can you stop cripping for a few right. minutes? Give us our name back. Give us our name you know what I'm back. Saying? And it's yeah. all family, though. Yeah. You know, it wasn't no so hostile Dale, takeover. It, 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 we so we could say circle. Dale probably was sharing ideas or just yeah, talking about yeah. his shit somewhere. And Dale's had so many inc- incarnations. Dale has been TDK plus 30. Like, Dale is a genius. Right. Like, a genius. You know, right. like him and Cash, like, I'm like, oh, these dudes is Next geniuses. level, yeah. You know what I'm saying, yeah. though? Like, okay? Yeah. So he's had... 10 or 12 different names, concepts, all that, but it always is, and when I get on, I'm putting y'all on. He's never been for self, ever. You feel what I'm saying, though? So, so as we so know he it, created the Mad Circle concept, and then that was that. Yeah. Then Onyx came out with the Mad Face, right? and so we changed it to just the straight face. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because we didn't want to be, Onyx came out with 91 or 92. Was it always a third eye? Yeah, yeah. It was always a third it, eye. It used to have a nose, though. If you look at Sleeping on My Couch in the video, the Hyro sign has a nose. I'm a master at that video. <laughs> so, and, and that was Cube on the couch. That was Cube on the couch. They, 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 he, he showed up, it was the day he cut his curl. And so that's why he had the hat over his face. He was like, you know, I'm gonna I'm a debut a new, new uh, ice cream cutter here. Yeah. 
We filmed that. that. We filmed that. That's a good that. one. Huh? That's a I did not know that. <laughs> but that I knew that they that 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 Mad Circle name, and it's crazy because shout out to Filthy Rich. His you know his thing is FOD, which uh-huh. comes from his block seminary. Uh-huh. But those particular people that say FOD, that younger group of seminary guys, not the OGs, but that particular guy called they they called themselves the Mad Circle at one point. Oh wow. But their influence, of course, was Dove C in the Mad Circle, which debuted a young Coolio. Uh, first mm-hmm. time I ever seen Coolio. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was that, County Line? County Line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was County Line. Um, DJ Aladdin, world, DJ world, Aladdin. World, world champion DJ Aladdin. Man, you know what I'm saying? man, that's crazy. And so from Dale with uh, Get Off My Couch to Bob Dabalina to just all the, when I when I was able to relate you guys back to him, it all made so it much sense because yeah. he was so eccentric to me. Like he had a nose piercing back then, yeah. early on. Like that yeah. was unheard of. I thought that was bold. That was like face tap to me. <laughs> yeah, you know at what I mean? Time it was, yeah, that was like a, niggas yeah. couldn't even have two earrings. Like yeah. Yeah. you really couldn't get one if you if your parents let you get one on the left side. You was lucky. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you know how the OGs they didn't play that shit. Like oh, so, we got to pulled out of my ear. Chicago, <laughs> that shit got snatched out. You got snatched. You snatched out. Yeah, they got yanked out. You even try that. <laughs> <laughs> but when 93 till infinity dropped, you guys were already on job. Yeah, we got that, that, that we got signed in 92 when I was a senior. When you was a senior. Yeah. And um <laughs> uh what's so funny is Cass had a separate deal yeah. with who? On job, it's on job, on job also. And he talked about when he got his advance, he bought race car tracks. He bought everything. I was like Camaro. What the fuck? Gear, <laughs> gear. cash, cash. He said he, he, it, si- he signed the same kind of deal we had, but he's to the face. He's to the split. face. We yeah. It. We gotta yeah. split it. Just split cash it. had everything. Right. Cash grew up though with everything though. Like I'm saying, if we was going on a field trip and then the, the the field trip slip said bring five dollars. Cash mama give him a dub. Oh, the niggas yeah. had the members only plastic ones. Yeah. Cash had the leather joint. The real cash would been him. So his dirty little. jacket had the real Yeah, he had, exactly. He, he had, had the pink ex- <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. I'll show you a picture. Like, he had the real derby. He had the real derby. Everybody else had the Chinese joint. Yep. Did, yep. Did, y'all, did y'all used to, like, go to house parties? Well, we were, yeah. Mainly in Berkeley, though. You in know what Berkeley, I'm saying? The yeah. little frat parties yeah. and stuff. And then we used to go to um, over on Chester, like in the West. They used to have reggae parties mm-hmm. and, like, underground uh, uh, warehouse parties and stuff okay. like that. So, But that's probably... 16, so 16. what is that, 91, yeah. 90, 91. Yeah. We used to go to the bird cage and sneak in. Bird cage, Cypher and then like Mr. Floppies or Mr. Fives over on, it's all the way out on 8th Street. It's like an old house now. now oh, they, yeah. That used to be damn. a rave spot. So we used, to, we used to club. I mean, but we would go just to either rap in the Cypher or watch the homies dance in the Cypher. Like, it was hip hop. Like, what was a cypher called here, though? Did they just call it like a flow session? Oh, oh, what, what, I can't even. Yeah, fade the circle. Fade yeah, the circle. Fade the circle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm about to yeah, fade the circle. Fade right the circle. Yep. <laughs> 12, when you, when you, speaking of those parties, when you start doing that with your crew, like, who, what, what influences did y'all get to do that? Like, I mean, you know, like, for me, I don't know why, but I was just naturally the rebellious party thrower. In, in high school. Like, I was the kid that knew everybody. I played sports, so I was a jock, but I would hang out with, like, the geeks, the whatever. So when it came to it, I was just the one that could bring everybody together. So I started throwing parties as young as 15, you know what I'm but saying? But you never was a rapper. I was never a rapper, right? right? Just in the mirror? Not <laughs> none of that, none of that. Basically, what, what happened was is, I, uh, you know, with throw hella parties, we start doing a rave party thing. I met DJs. I started DJing in high school, like 16, because I was like, yo, I could do this shit better than these motherfuckers. Right. And they were playing all this rave drum and bass and house music. And I was into house music because if you're from Chicago, it's a you part of our house, culture. Yeah. So it's like house music and all of that. We was doing it. And that's what the DJs was doing. I started playing break beats when I first started, mm. like Miami break beats and like drum and bass and ghetto house, like DJ okay. Funk, like, yeah. like there's some hoes in this house oh, type yeah, shit, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And like that, that was like my whole thing as, and like in high school and um, you know, I just kept on progressing and then it just went into hip hop naturally. It wasn't, you know, something where I was like, whatever, the National Rave Act had came out like right as I got done with high school and that deaded all the parties, oh, wow. right? Because what happened was is kids was dying off of Special K and triple stack mollies and all types of pills and shit. These white kids was dying and shit. And so they put out this thing called the National Rave Act, 
where you couldn't throw a rave party no more, right? You couldn't throw no three-day parties, the lights, the DJs and all that. And what's so crazy is, is when I was in high school, um, my partner was a part of throwing this big-ass rave party, which one of the last ones called Live on the Decks 4. And they would bring rap acts, electronic acts all together, but Live on the Decks 4, the triple threat got booked, right? This is John, uh, Shortcut, Vin Rock, and all of them. Wow. So I have this part of this picture when I'm like 15 years old with John, he, when he see like, like, and like all the old school shit, like I used to, I met them and now I know them as regular people. I met Steve and, uh, and uh, uh, Amp, Anthony and when they were on tour with them. I didn't, I didn't, they, I think they had brought them in on tour and I had snuck out and drove up to Madison, Wisconsin. And they all had a show together. I was like 15, bro, right? Uh, and I drove all the way up to Madison, Wisconsin because I was in the underground rap and whatever the scoop was. So it was some new shit. I just heard about they record. Casual was dropping all of that. You know, um, they were like a generation ahead of me, but I was always right there and I had a fake ID. This cat named Derek where I, I got his shit. So even if they were playing in an adult club, I was in that motherfucker. You was in that thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Every time. So I remember I met Steve, I was probably like 15 or 16 years old, man. And then fast forward like 15 years later, I ended up being his DJ, wow. which is hella crazy. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like way crazy. after the shit, so. You know, it's funny you mm -hmm. talked about, uh, um, mm -hmm. You were saying house music because um, I had this conversation when the recently when the Beyonce record and the Drake shit dropped, right? And I told people I've been listening to house music my whole life. Like I've been listening, like I had to start replaying songs for people to like. You know this is house, right? Like oh, yeah. you know They'll soul know to soul is They'll house, right? The <laughs> first DJ who ever taught me how to DJ was a house DJ, Paul yeah. Johnson from Chicago. Rest in peace. He actually just died during the, during the pandemic, but. Yeah. He was the first cat to even show me how to spin records. I house mean, music. and Deep all house. the party records, right. like early, early mm -hmm. 90s, late 80s, like a lot of um, CNC Music Factory was mm -hmm. big records. Kid fucking, house, a lot, yeah. A lot of stuff. Kids, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, we yeah. had, oh, yeah, no, go, we had, but the thing with Chicago is we had our own shit, right? Yeah, yeah. And because we were such a big city, you could be a big Chicago DJ and never leave, right? And then people from outside the city would call you up and you would go and do shit, mm -hmm. but it was like self-contained because our parties were huge. Everybody came out. You could play in Harvey right over the tracks and the Harvey Conventional Center and be right over there in Indiana playing, go play Stank Ass Gary, mm -hmm. whatever it was, you know what I'm saying, and come back. And it was short. <laughs> it did stink, though, <laughs> right? You could go the mills, bro. Gary Funky. Wow. Anyway, uh, but you could go and you could do that area and be contained within a two-hour radius. Go up to Milwaukee. Rock the rave, you know what I'm saying? That was a big, big venue, still up, I think, you know what I'm saying, still going. But that was a historical venue for me because it was like, if you could make it up to Milwaukee and play the rave that room, you was on. Yeah. And, and being from the south side of Chicago growing up, my whole thing was this. If I could make it downtown and DJ one time, that's it. That was my bucket list shit. That was my goal, one time. You know what I'm saying? I got my first residency downtown when I was 19. He, you, you guys said, he said, uh, you got, you just said that they was a generation above you. And I was going to say that, that I, I watched you say, like, when you was at a show, you looked around and you was the oldest guy there. It wasn't that you was relevant. You just like, okay, what else? Yeah. What else am I going to do? Right? So when you, when you said that, I, but I thought about this, like hip hop ages you right because it's always been a young man's sport, but for guys like you guys, not really. And I'm going to tell you why, because New kids discover you guys all the time, like a rock group. Yeah, you, so we, you, didn't know, we don't, we didn't understand. You know, when you're thirty, you yeah, think you old. Too. You think you old? You didn't yeah, that. yeah, you didn't like. That. But and I think what it is is like I think it's more so being free with your music, not being trendy, right? Yeah. When you are who you are, it just resonates with people. You don't have to try to like, you know what I'm saying? Tech Nine is not trying to make a trap record. Yeah. For what? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, and it would be hard too if he did. Yeah, yeah, it you would be hard. Like, be, be you hard know what I'm saying? He but he just does what he does. Like, yeah. it's it's not it's not um it's not really thought. And and also speaking of the young generation, when I when I listen to um J Cole's freestyle over '93 to yeah. Fendi, I'm like, wow. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, that's y'all son. Like that's that's, that's that's like y'all created that. Like he's the, a direct reflection of that. Like you know what I mean. Like when you look at that and you see that, like what what, what, what how did it make you feel and what was your thoughts about it? I I really 
had to reevaluate my approach towards music. You know, mm -hmm. the reason why I got into architecture was really because I was uh, scared of my, you know, mortality in the, in the music industry. Now, you know, I've been architect for the past, almost 10 years now, you know what I mean? And, and I, I went back in maybe 20, 2008 is when I decided to do it. And now I'm like, I'm ready to make, I got three records from the pandemic done. Like I'm on my full rapper mode again. So mm. I, I had to reevaluate right. that. that just saying that, I got to look at these youngsters like the same way, like we listening to Stevie Wonder records right. and Ray Charles record, right. all the stuff that we sampling. And it, it, you know, all the Miles Davis and Coltrane, like that shit is older than our parents, some of it. For real. So, so for, you got to, especially the way music is now, mm -hmm. you don't even got to dig. Mm -hmm. It's all there. You just got to know what to look for or just, or just look and let the algorithm take you wherever for it's going to sure. take you. I got to realize that your music is new to whoever heard it. For right, sure. this, 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 you brand new, and then mm -hmm. so you need to keep providing and feeding, feeding folks. If if, if you want to continue to be a musician, mm -hmm. you need to keep mm -hmm. providing, feeding folks, and and do you. And like you said, like I don't, I feel like every Souls of Mischief record is different. Every Tajay record is different. Every Dell record is different. We don't really have a style. Mm -hmm. You know, people are like all oh, jazzy this, and I'm like, yeah, that's what we was making in the '90s because that was we big in the '90s. But, but second record, we've took a full departure and was mainly keyboard beats and sparse samples and all that. And now, you know, we're we doing what we do now. I mean, A-plus got, got uh, like dubstep stuff and all. Not, not to follow the trend, but that's because that's what he's that's into. That's what he's into, yeah. So, stay all blue. Stay all blue. I'm just trying to stay racked up like you. Put an eight in a one and do magic. Trying to stretch hair around like elastic. Eco-friendly drug dealer, I don't waste no plastic. Use all four corners of that baggie uh, All I ever wanted was a bankroll So I pull up on champ before the bank close Say no to stank hoes and stank clothes No paramedic pimpin' nigga, we don't save hoes Yeah, rest in peace to little